it's Anne and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit fun. We're gonna do a Bob Ross painting on my face. I've seen a lot of makeup artists do this challenge and I've just been dying to try it on myself. When it comes to doing makeup tutorials in general, I'm always a little bit hesitant because I'm definitely not like a makeup guru. I just like to play around with makeup. I like a good natural dewy face with some highlight. Let's be real, a lot of highlight. But makeup is just another art form for me and I just like to play around. In case you guys are interested about what episode I'm following along to, it is Bob Ross's Sunset Aglow, Season 26, Episode 12, okay? So just go ahead, grab yourself a cup of tea, coffee, whatever it is that you like to drink, some Starbucks, and let's get started. Uh, hey, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd do a painting that just has a lot of color in it, one that'll make you feel good inside. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've got done up here. I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretched canvas, but you use any size that you want. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin, oh. even coat of liquid white. So the okay, canvas is all wet and, and we so can really blend color harder. up there. So just do something like that. That's all there is to it. Just, just make a little, Little crisscross strokes, something like that. So I'm using my there. Marron palette. Once again, without cleaning yes. the brush, a little touch of the bright red. And I have some yellow. Be careful with the bright red. red. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color, but it is so strong. Mm. Dang, I should put foundation One, first. two, but turn the whole Atlantic Ocean red. Be very careful with it. Okay. Tell you what, let's let's do the rest of the sky and let's let's use a lavender color. We'll just brush mix it here. I'll use a little phthalo blue. Glycerin crimson, proportionately much more crimson than blue because it's crimson's a weak color compared to the to the blue. All right, let's go up in here. Okay. Now then, I just want to sort of dance this around a little bit. Just let it play and bounce here and there and there and here. Then we'll wash the brush. That's the most fun part of this whole procedure. Oh my gosh, he already has the whole sky down. I haven't done... Just be to Wait, Bob. Hold on, Bob. Hold on, Bob. Now then, clean, dry brush. Hold on, Bob. Let's begin blending these colors together. Okay, Just well, you know what? Just blend them me... together. Put a little bright red with it. Shoot, looks like a firecracker. Oh, Sparkle. it's turning like greenish. Maybe in our world there lives a big old cloud right up in here. It just sort of floats around, has a good time all day. Maybe... I just got I a know. big rainbow on my forehead just, so far. Just decide where these clouds live in your world. I don't need to base that out a little bit. I didn't Let have any time. game plan for this. I just chose there one that I liked. It. Just caress the canvas. But out. as far as like proper makeup there application techniques, probably Something not the like person it. you guys want to go and to. You can fluff it a little bit, blend it, a little bit of white with it. And just begin putting in all kinds of gorgeous little things that just float around. There they go. There they go. Least, least little touch of the fatal blue, maybe. Whew, ooh, that's nice. Be careful that you don't hit that yellow, though. And maybe up here in our sky, let's just put, while we have this old brush working so well, let's just put the indication of some little floaters around in here. Some little floaters. Just enough okay. to break it up. See? All right, let's do this. Let's put a nice dark cloud in here. That oh. contrast will, it'll sparkle. It'll absolutely sparkle. There. Where? Maybe we'll put a oh, wild shape so like on this in one. between the yellow. There we go. Okay. Got a little bump that lives right there. And they all lived in the clouds. You can see all kinds of shapes in there if you just spend a little time and study it and you got a good imagination. All kinds of things. Back to my little blender. Now then, just softly, softly blend this a little. Don't have to do it much. Okay. And very lightly. That's where the blender brush really works well. Oh. And sometimes you can take, you can take a little bit like bright red and white. To. Let's take some pure this titanium is, white. I, I'm surprised. Maybe Honestly, this is world, going a lot quicker than right I thought. Behind that big cloud there. Some white paint right into there. I want this to be very bright. I'm just going to go right over that and I'll put it back in if I decide I want it. Because we don't make mistakes. Don't make mistakes. There. Everybody has those days. Now, we can take our blender brush and very gently, 
just blend that right in and that'll end up being a nice gorgeous bright spot in her painting when it's done oh i know my forehead is about so to break out tomorrow we've wasted all of our time up here in the sky let's let's put a little something i'll just take a little of that lavender since it's going so nice and let's go down here and let's just put some of that nice lavender color down here about like that a little more of that lavender color maybe we'll have a little mountain that lives wee wee back in the distance here let's do that my son steve you might have saw him on some of the other shows he's just one of the most dynamite mountain painters i've ever seen there we go that's really really about all we're going to do just enough to give the indication of a little highlight here and there I down. still want this to look like somewhat of a cool okay. makeup look, so I don't want to have like a mountain in the middle See, of my and forehead. And, I think across, and we have instant reflections. Let's have some fun. You know me. <laughs> I like trees. Let's make a tree. Clean off a spot to work here. Take some black. <laughs> you know me. I like a whole tree here and there. And maybe in our world, there's a couple of trees that live right there. Now there's three. See, just put in the tops, put in a few little indications. Looks like a whole bunch of trees. Really and truly, you can just put anything in here. I just wanted to show you mainly today how to do a fantastic sky. Very easy, very quick. There. We just fill that up with color. That is the one good thing about landscapes. Like if we do landscape paintings or drawings, like there's no right or wrong answer. No one is going to look at a tree and be like, you forgot a leaf, bro. Looking for a clean brush. Wow, well, this isn't bad. I'm take a little sap green, a little yellow, a little yellow ochre. This is cad yellow. Grab the Indian yellow too. Now I want this, get a little black in there too. I want this to be a dark green, dark green, dark green. And we'll come right along in here. Dark green though. Don't make a bright shiny thing this dark. And put the indication here and there and there and here. Some little highlights. Little indication of some water line right underneath there. Something like it. Don't need much. Honestly, this was super was quick. Like There's a little bit. This video was super Just drop quick. It in. I was so intimidated. Dark, dark, dark down here toward the base. To do this. Alright, maybe. But it, it, it was super path. quick. Water. Just a That's path. the power of Bob Ross for you. Like, he can make All you right. just Take sit down for 30 minutes color. and feel as if you've only been sitting down up. for like five. He has such a <laughs> soothing up. voice and just a happy just attitude when it comes idea. to art. So I'm genuinely surprised how quick that was. And honestly, at the beginning, I was really scared because th at the, the beginning is when he goes really quick and he starts to lay down like the foundation of everything and you're just like, oh my gosh, I need to keep it. Hold on, Bob, chill out, Bob, wait, Bob. I think it's the fact that like when you see the thumbnail and you see what you're gonna paint, it looks really complicated and it looks like it could have taken you a couple of hours, but Bob has his techniques on point, like he just knows all his brushes and stuff, so he makes it super easy. I am personally not a foundation person. I just like to concentrate it under my eyes to obviously hide these dark circles, um, but then I like focus it in the middle and then just kind of like gradually bring it out. I'm gonna try and like diffuse the edge of that, there you go. It feels looking a bit scary. This is fun. We should do this again. Hopefully I'll be a little bit more prepared, not as scared. Ooh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. At least the next time I won't be as intimidated, so I'll probably talk a little bit more. So I think since this is such a like pink and purple look, I kind of want to just go with blush first and establish the colors coming down. Ooh, that was kind of a lot of blush, but I know that when it comes to this channel, I'm all over the place. 
but hey, you know, at first I was trying to be hard on myself about it, but then I realized that's who I am. Gotta embrace it. As I'm talking to you guys with a whole painting on my forehead. I think we all know that we've kind of broken down all the boundaries at this point. <laughs> I don't typically contour my nose too much anymore, but might as well go all out. I remember when nose contouring first became a thing. I was in high school and I was actually very, very insecure about my nose. So of course I tried to hop on the trend. And looking back, um, I realized like how muddy sometimes I would look with my nose contour. I mean, I'm not doing a much a better job right now, but as I said, I don't even contour my nose really at this point in my life. Okay, so now I need to chill this out. So I think I'm just going to go and I'm just going to start with a normal, like, these colors. Again, I'm not about to do anything extravagant with the eyeshadow because honestly, I think that the forehead painting was enough in itself. I told you guys I was just gonna do like a smoky eye, really. Then again, who am I kidding? I'm not the greatest at eyeshadow. So, I really think that's all I wanna do. I just kinda wanted to do the fun Bob Ross part of it. I do have lashes. We're gonna see. I kinda went on a whole strip lash strike for some time, and that was cause it just like, I already have a baby face so when I throw lashes on it almost looks like I'm trying way too hard so I figured I would just embrace my baby face for a couple of years and maybe I'll be okay with strip lashes when I'm 30 I don't know so I'm weird I like to spray my face and then use my dip brow because I just think it helps it glide a lot easier I'm excited to finally put my eyebrows on because goodness gracious, this is probably going to be so satisfying. But I was in desperate need of this eyebrow coming back to life. Wow. Now that's a look. See, once you add your eyebrow, that's when it makes it a look. So, okay, so this one, this eyebrow might be a little hard to find. It's so fun playing around with makeup because it's really interesting to think like something like this makes me feel super confident. Granted, I won't go to the clubs looking like this. I mean, I don't go to the clubs in general, but <laughs> I would not show up to the club like this. Although, I did go out on Halloween though. That's one night that I will go out. I had done like a whole third eye look and made a fake eye in the middle of my head and it just made me feel like the baddest chick in the room. All I gotta do is put some mascara. I swear, when I put on mascara, it is a night and day difference. Without mascara, it looks like I have like no lashes at all whatsoever. And then I put mascara on and it's like BAM! Okay, maybe not that loud of a bam, more of like a bam. But I did give up using an eyelash curler like years ago and it was the best thing that I've ever done. I figured by getting rid of my eyelash curler, I won't be like pulling out my eyelashes and I just need to find a good mascara that curls them a little bit, gives them a natural curl. So roller lash has been my best friend. All right guys, so this is the finished look. Um, this is really fun to create, I can't lie. I don't even wanna take it off. I've already taken like a billion selfies. I'm probably about to take more. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what you thought and subscribe if you haven't already because we want you here for a long time and not just a good time, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.